right morning everybody i think most people seem to be able to hear me okay um which is good thanks everyone for joining us today so uh i touched on last week why uh, garden lighting or outside lighting is really important um the first reason is because when you're inside the house at night time um, it can be that your uh, glass doors at the back of the house can turn into basically a big black mirror and you end up seeing a reflection of yourself and the room, the interior spaces. So your living space shrinks at night time. Uh, and you can see that in the image that I'm showing now. So what we want to try and do is resolve that. And by lighting something outside, you extend your living space and you can see through the glass into the outside area. The second reason why we want to do some outside lighting is because we want to create an outside living space, um, particularly important um, in areas of the world where um, you have warmer color, you have warmer temperatures, um, and in those spaces you can enjoy um, outside spaces into the evenings. Uh, obviously, in the UK, in London, we've had some great sunshine over the past week, um, but actually, that's probably the best we're going to get for the rest of the year. Um, usually too cold so the first point is probably more appropriate um, but yeah it's creating those outside living spaces so here's my um, garden plan that I've put together over the past couple of days um, so this is a it's not a real garden it's something I co cobbled together a few uh, elements within that and what I've done is the same with our open plan spaces I've tried to establish uh, with the client actually you know, what are the key features within the space and how do they want to use it? So I know that most of their time will be spent here um, on the main patio area, uh, where they'll be dining, um, having drinks, maybe leaving some of the, um, the patio doors open just to get that inside outside link. And then throughout the garden, you've got other various features. So a couple of feature trees here within low level planting. Um, you've got some nice little trees here as well. Um, these are some uh, Buxus pyramid cones, so sort of tall, um, narrow cones. The steps lead down onto this lawn here. Um, at the very end of the garden, you've got a statue, which is framed by two more cones there. Um, and at the back, you've got um, a large tree and a few specimen trees as well, either side. So these areas here are really just a walkway um, if they wanted to go on a night stroll. Uh, you've got high box hedging here which masks some of that space um, so the key is that you see through the garden um, to the, these main features at the end so i can tell you what i'm definitely not going to do um, i'm definitely not going to use uh, any floodlights uh, i'm not going to try and light this big open space here i'm not going to try and light directly down on the, onto the coffee table from the building um, what I'm going to try and do is exactly what I've done for the uh, open plan living spaces, which is to focus on to different features within the space, trying to layer the lighting uh, and also give uh, depth and texture to the garden. So the first thing I want to do um, is here, um, just directly outside the glass, um, we've got a soffit overhang. So I'm going to install some of our um, little IP rated down lights into the underside of the soffit. And what they'll do is light the floor directly outside the glass. So that'll immediately draw your eyes beyond the glass and prevent some of that reflection effect. So this is the type of thing I'm thinking. So these ones are actually uh, mounted uh, on the wall above the windows. Uh, and you can see there how you get the light down onto the floor. So if you don't have a soffit, then you can use the, uh, the surface mounted fittings. It's just, if you have a soffit, then obviously uh, a recess fitting is a little bit more discreet, but this is another alternative uh, for how you might uh, be able to achieve the same effect. So that's using the, the Q wall 40, whereas the recessed version is the uh, water spring 40. So that's a really good start. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is inter integrate some decorative lighting. Um, so there's three different elements that I want to do. So here, either side of the main doors uh, from the interior area is uh, a decorative wall light uh, or a lantern. So that would give you a nice framing effect to the doors, but also a nice ambient light in, on the patio area. For the dining table, as I said previously, we don't want to di uh, direct a light from high on, on the building down onto the, onto the table. One reason for that is if you're sitting in these seats here opposite the light, then actually that light's just gonna be shining straight in your face. It's not gonna be very comfortable at all. So the best thing for um, a table area like this is 
either candles or something battery operated on the table. Or here, what I'm thinking about is a floor standing um, lamp that would lean over the table and give you a nice soft lighting effect there. In the opposite corner, um, I didn't want to have anything too high, so I've gone for some floor standing lanterns. Uh, and these will give you a nice low level um, effect uh, in that corner of the patio. So that's this sort of lantern here, which gives you a nice shadow effect onto the floor. That's from a company called Techna. Uh, they're a Belgian company, but there's plenty of uh, suppliers who can do um, something like this. Um, the image on the right hand side, this is the, the two decorative uh, wall mounted lanterns either side of the door. So you can see how that gives you a nice soft ambient light. And then that's what I'm thinking about for a floor standing lamp. Um, so you can use these outside. These are um, designed for use um, in areas where it's going to get wet. Um, the fabrics um, you know, don't go moldy or anything like that. The wood is uh, specially treated. Uh, so they're perfectly suitable for those areas. Um, these ones are from Artemidi and this is uh, Indian Ocean. Um, so you can check out those suppliers for, for those decorative items. So the next thing is uh, to light the feature trees. Um, so these larger ones here, I'm going to use three spotlights on those to uplight. And then either side, we've got three smaller ones, which I'm going to use um, a single spotlight on. So I've got that on the, on the other side of the garden as well. So this is bedding here. I'm spiking a light into the bedding. Here is a pot. You can do the same thing, just spike the light into the pot. At the back of the garden, I've got a, spe a specimen tree and also some tall vegetation. So on the specimen tree, I'm going to go for a spike light, which has a narrow beam, which focuses the light onto that feature. Um, whereas here with the tall vegetation, this is a bit more generic. Um, it's quite um, broad. So I'm going to go for a light source, which doesn't have an optic on it and spreads the light uh, very wide. So you get a, a really soft um, backlighting effect. So this is here an example of uplighting the tree using um, a fitting with a focused beam. So there is spiked into the soil. That's this fitting here, the Q40 spike, and that would be giving you this effect here. And then where you want a softer, wider wash of light, um, the Hampton 40 is going to give you that. Um, so it's going to be a bit more subtle. Um, it's a wider, non-specific um, lighting effect. So with spike lights, um, there's a lot of benefits, but also um, there's a few practical considerations to make as well. Um, the benefits are that you can move that spike around. Um, so as and when the garden changes from uh, summer to winter or spring to autumn, some of the features within the garden might also change. Um, you might want to move the light to, to light a different feature, which is looking better in the autumn than something in the spring. Um, but one of the issues here is that we sometimes get calls from, from clients saying my lights are not working, but actually sometimes the gardener's gone in there to do his maintenance work, he's taken out the spike, he's left it on the floor, uh, and then it's got covered in leaves. So one of the key things to do is educate whoever's doing the garden maintenance so that they know the purpose of all the lights, um, what they're there for, and the fact that they have to go back where they were positioned previously. Um, second issue can be um, foxes and other rodents um, or even the gardener putting his spade through a cable. Um, so although this light is on the floor here what they have done well is to have this sleeving um, over the cable itself so that will protect it. This is a flexible um, copex sleeving. Um, it's made of a, a tougher um, hard plastic uh, but still flexible and that will prote protect the, uh, the cable that's inside. So that's definitely worth doing. Um, so it's added in, um, some additional expense and time uh, for the installer, but actually it's gonna ensure that this lighting will last um, and not fail. Uh, 